Hi everyone, Carol here. I am the editor of NOSH and I am at Expo East 2022 in Philadelphia. And joining me today is the founder and CEO of Chubby Snacks, Dylan Seglio. Dylan, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for stopping by. So for our viewers, what is Chubby Snacks? Yeah, Chubby Snacks are superfood PB&Js. They come packaged individually, uh, made with whole wheat organic bread. Uh, superfood jams, so we use like chia seeds instead of pectin, uh, no preservatives, um, and we use clean nut butters, almond butter or peanut butter. Now, I know this has been an exciting week. You guys announced some fundraising news. Tell me a little bit about the capital you brought in. Yeah, so we, uh, we're really excited. I mean, it came out obviously a really good time uh, leading up to the expo. Uh, it was a big piece of press, obviously. Uh, we raised $3.5 million uh, since the beginning of the business. Uh, we just went out and raised a bridge round, $1.5 million. Uh, ultimately, the goal is to utilize that funds to get us to our first institutional round, which will be likely be next year. And what are your plans for this capital? What uh, do you need to invest into in order to get you to that next round? Mostly it's our, our opportunity for sales, right? Like we're, we have another 150 doors that are launching by the end of this year. We have some really big opportunities coming next year. Um, we just really wanted to cushion our pockets as much as we could to be able to, you know, make sure that we're delivering on time, we're sourcing our ingredients on time, uh, and just putting us in a position where we can have a runway long enough to where we can go out and raise a big institutional round next year. I think you're right. There is a lot of opportunity in this space. Um, you know, I've been fascinated by the category because you look at Uncrustables, uh, I believe it's going to be a billion dollar brand soon. And yet in the natural channel, there's no real alternative. Uh, there's been a couple other brands that have tried to make products, not all of them have stuck around. Why do you think this is a category that's so popular in conventional? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, first off, you got to give homage to Uncrustables. They've done a phenomenal job at building this business to what it is today. Um, but honestly, it really boils down to manufacturing. It's a difficult product to manufacture. You can't just go out to a co-manufacturer around the country and ask them to make you know, 50,000 crustless peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It, it just doesn't exist. Um, and so the reason why we are we're, where we are today is just because we brought it in-house initially, we were self-manufacturers, we figured out how to prove the concept, and we used that to leverage our opportunities to get into a co-manufacturer. I know production was a little fraught. You guys had to change your shape due to a cease and desist. Uh, what happened there? About 30 days into business, I, unbeknownst to me, they have a, a trademark patent on a circle-shaped sandwich. Um, yeah, I found that out the hard way, unfortunately. Uh, we weren't even 30 days into business. I don't even think we had 1,000 followers on Instagram, and uh, they came knocking on my door telling me I had to change the shape or close my business. And so obviously, like, you know, it's a David versus Goliath type scenario. I didn't have the money to be able to go to court with them and fight the circle shaped sandwich. And so uh, ultimately, we decided that we wanted to be a little bit more unique. Uh, and we launched the, the cloud shaped sandwich, which we have patented, by the way. That was, a, that was a tough pill to swallow, but ultimately, it was for the best. The only thing easier than self manufacturing circle shaped sandwiches is self manufacturing yeah. cloud shaped sandwiches, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, quite difficult, to say the least. Uh, but I'd like to think that we cracked the code. Um, we have some automation coming into the mix that allow us to be able to really scale our operations. And you know, prior to that, it was just figuring out how we could bridge the gap to go from you know, manually made sandwiches to semi-automatic made sandwiches to fully automatic made sandwiches. Besides operations, uh, I imagine sales and marketing, getting placement in stores is also difficult when you're going up against such a large strategic player. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when we first started this business, we were all direct to consumer, selling online to consumers around the country. Uh, but we leveraged that. We used that as an opportunity to get in front of retail buyers. Um, and ultimately, we did that last year. Whole Foods was our first partner. Um, and obviously, using the name Whole Foods helps open the doors to a lot of other retailers. And so moving forward, our playbook really is just like utilizing online for experiential purposes. We'll launch new flavor combinations, new flavor or new products there. Um, and then from there, use that data that we rapidly tested to go to like a Whole Foods, for instance, and be like, hey, like we sold out of this product in, you know, say, 24 hours, 48 hours a week. We think this is good data to that will essentially drive the opportunity for us to bring that product to retail. It sounds like D2C is a big part of the strategy, but at a certain point, I imagine you have to go after conventional retailers. What is the thought and strategy around, you know, pursuing Uncrustables in stores, in conventional retailers? How do you go after that market? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, as I mentioned, we're using, utilizing direct to consumer as our way to like open up more opportunities. Uh, but once we get into retail, like we know we're eventually going to be sitting next to the Uncrustable on the shelf. And for us, like we know in a sense we're competing against them, but at the same time, we're just moving the category forward. There's enough room and there's enough opportunity for multiple players to uh, play in the space. Um, you know, and when we sit next to the Uncrustable, we end up having better sales just because we're providing the consumer an opportunity to make a decision at the freezer. They're used to going to that door all the time just to buy one product, but now there's multiple products to be, that you're able to buy. And so it, it's good business for us and it's also good business for them. Well, thank you so much for sharing that business story with us and I hope you have a great rest of the show. Awesome, me too, enjoy the show as well.